This is Algebra 2 with Trig, 8C.1B. We're going to continue talking about different things with the law of sines. We're also going to talk about the area of a triangle. When we have a situation with side angle side, when we're given two sides of a triangle and the included angle, we can use a formula that you would be pretty familiar with. You know that the area of a triangle is half base times height. That's what you know as the area of a triangle. Well, when we look at it without a right angle, we don't know what the height is. We know that the height would come down in this area. It's called an altitude, which means a height is going to be 90 degrees with that opposite side. If we're given an angle value, the altitude here is considered the height of the triangle. So sine... This is off the screen, so let me bring it back in a little closer. Sine of A is going to be this opposite side, which is the H, which is the height, over this adjacent side, or our notes talk about the other side. In this case, it happens to be the letter C. So we would multiply by the C over. So in this case, we have C sine of A. So that is the height of the triangle. That is your height here for the triangle. C sine of A. So if you look here, we have C sine of A. That is the height of the triangle. And B would be the base all the way across the bottom. So it's half a base times height. B is your base in this case. C sine of A is your height. So half a base times height. So this is still doing the same formulas that you're always used to. There's one of them. This is a different one. And of course, this is the latest one we are talking about here. It all depends on which angle you're going from. If you're going from angle A, angle B, or angle C. So let's come on down. We're given a triangular flower bed. If you lay off the lengths 15 and 11 for two sides of the garden plus a 62 degree angle between, that's an important term there, between these two sides, so 15 and 11 with a 62 degree angle in between those two, that's all we need to know to find the area of this triangle. So the area is going to be 11 times 15 times the sine of 62. Since this is the order of side angle side, SAS, we are using our formula from right here, the SAS formula to figure out the area. It doesn't matter what the letters specifically are, but they are the two side lengths that you're given times the sign of the angle that you're given. So using your calculator, being sure you are in degree mode, you need to hit mode to verify you're in degree mode. 
11 times 15 times the sine of 62. That gives us 145.69. And these are feet, so they would be considered cubic feet. So you go ahead, you can pause the video. This is side, angle, side with the information that they give us. So we know how to use our formula. Since it's labeled with A, B's, and C's, you can be more detailed about which exact formula you're using. It looks like we have side A, we have side B, and we're using angle C. So it looks like we're using this one here. But we're going to multiply our two sides times the sine of the angle. Go ahead and try that. I noticed over here I never used the half. The formula is half, of course. We talked about that it's half a base times height. So we need to take half of our 145. And when we do that, our area is 72.84. Oh, not cubic either, huh? This is area, so it's squared. Just got done doing volume. So, feet squared. Pause the video, give this a try. So being observant to the information they gave us here, this looks like side A. This looks like side B, because it's across from angle B. This looks like angle C. And that's what our area is going to be. So the area is half of... 1.4 times 2.3 times the sine of 78.1. Half 1.4 times 2.3 times the sine of 78.1. And we have an area that's 1.57 these are miles, so they're considered square miles. All right, in our next section down here, we're going to be talking about what are the methods we're using? When we're given non-right triangles, we cannot use right triangle trigonometry, which we typically call Sokotoa. You can't use Sokotoa if you don't have a right angle. But we can use what's called Law of Sines. And we use law of signs when we're, we're given the order of the information in this situation, or even if it's SSA. <coughs> Two sides and the non-included angle. Now, we're going to learn in the future another method called law of cosines. Law of cosines is going to be used when we don't have it in this format, like if we have side, 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 or if we're given side, angle, side. You can't use law of sines. Now the way we've talked about it in class is that we use law of sines if we're given two bits of information for the same letter. So let's come on in here and see how that plays out. Let's take a look at this first example. 
this is a side, this is an angle, this is a side. So the information that they've given us is side, angle, side. You can look up here in our chart and we can see that side, angle, side goes with law of cosines. I would suggest looking at it and try to identify, do you have an angle and its opposite side? Any pair of those? We don't. We have an angle, but not the opposite side. We have a side, but not its opposite angle. So this is going to be law of cosines. Unfortunately, we haven't learned law of cosines yet, but that's why we're going to need it, because law of sines doesn't work. Let's come on over here to the next one. I notice right away that we have two bits of information. If this was angle B, this would be considered side B. So we have two bits of information for the same letter. We have the angle and the opposite side. So a law of signs is going to be good. This is in the order of S, S, and an A. Two sides and the non-included angle. We typically write that with the A being last. You can slide up here and take a look in the notes and notice that side side angle came from using law of signs. This would be two sides and the non-included angle. The S is after the two consecutive sides. The angle is after the two consecutive sides, so that's why the angle is after the two S's. On this one, we have an angle, we have an angle, and a side. What I'm primarily looking at is that I have an angle and its opposite side. When I have that pattern, I can use law of sines to solve for it. This triangle has information in the pattern of angle, angle, side. It's not wrong to call it side, angle, angle, but the common way, the expected way to write it is the angles go first and then your side. In the second one, we would write the sides first and then your angle. Here again, you have two S's and an angle not in between those two S's, so this would be SSA. Notice that you have an angle and the opposite side together. That's how you know you're going to use law of sines. Here you do not have an angle at all, so you don't have an angle across from any of them. You only have the sides. So this is going to be side, 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 and since you don't have a pair that match, you're going to have to use law of cosines to solve. We'll learn that in the future. Side, side, angle. We have two S's and an A. We have a pair of information, so that's law of sines. Side, side, angle, that's going to be law of signs. We have a pair of information that would be written from with the same letter. If this was angle B, this would be side B. Two bits of information from the same letter tells me it's law of signs. If you have the side and the opposite angle, you know it's going to be law of signs. This is two A's followed by an S. That's the order of which the information was given. Two S's followed by an A. We have a pair of information, so that's going to be law of signs. All right, this next section is going to talk about situations where we have side-side angle. 
In geometry, you could not prove triangles congruent when you had side-side angle. And the one way we remember that that wasn't good, you had angle side-side, ASS. That is not a way that you can prove triangles congruent. Well, here is why. We talked about it yesterday in a demonstration. Yesterday, I drew out these different situations. When we had an obtuse triangle, we would have no triangle or one triangle. If we had an acute angle, we could have one triangle, we could have no triangle, or we could have two triangles. Here's another way we could have one triangle. So many different patterns are going on here. This is using the sides. This is using this chart up here. There is another way to discuss this. This is focusing more on the angles. If you have an obtuse triangle, or actually it's an obtuse angle, but the triangle is obtuse, make sure that the opposite side is bigger than the other given side. The other given side I often call the adjacent side. When you look here, you're given an obtuse angle. The side opposite, if it is shorter than it, you're going to have no triangle. If it's longer than that adjacent side, then you're going to have one triangle. If the side opposite the obtuse angle is smaller, then there is no triangle. If the side opposite the obtuse angle is larger than the other side or the adjacent side, if it's larger, then there is one triangle. Now, if we have an acute triangle, that was this situation down here. There's a whole variety of different situations between one triangle can be made, no triangles can be made, and two triangles can be made. If you ever get a domain error, that's a hint that there's not going to be a triangle that can be made from this. And that's because the sine of theta is positive in both quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. So we can put a Q next to those if you want to consider that to be quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So we need to check if the supplement of theta, which is going to be found in quadrant 2, it's a quadrant 2 angle, can that be used to form a triangle? There's going to be an angle that we can find and an angle that we're given. This angle that we find is in quadrant two because sine does not give you answers in quadrant two. We'd have to calculate that one. The angle that's given, it's this acute angle, it's always going to be small. If those two put together are less than 180, then a second triangle can be formed. Now, with that all being said, this is focusing on angles. I prefer to focus on the sides. So I'll show you what that means. We're going to come down here and try two situations. So we're going to sketch these acute angles. So we'll call this 40 degrees. This is angle A. Across from angle A is considered side A. We'll call that 13. And next to this, 
typically we like to call the one next to angle A, the adjacent to angle A, side B. So what we want to figure out is how many triangles can be made with this information. Is this the only one that can be made? Or do you have more choices? The more choices we're referring to is can it swing on the outside and can it swing to the inside and create two different triangles? This opposite side has to be smaller than the side it's next to, which it is but it also has to compare to the height of the triangle. We don't know what this height of the triangle is. So that's a number that we need to calculate. What is the height of this triangle? So this is a right triangle. So we have sine of 40 that equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that's going to give us 16 sine of 40 to equal h. Now, when the triangles are written in this exact pattern, with the a and with the b as the side is next to it, this is always going to be b sine of a. That equals your height. We had that written in our notes earlier. Earlier, B sine of A is right here with your pattern. But again, that is only if angle A is the one that's given. If they change it to X, Y, and Z, then this little pattern messes up. So it's good to understand the geometry of what's going on. So now, we need to figure out what this is going to be. 16 sine of 40. You need to be in degree mode. Is 10.3 or 10.28. So what do we notice? We notice that 13 is longer than 10.28. So yes, it is going to come all the way down and touch. This is not going to be a right triangle because the opposite side is not 10.28. The opposite side is not longer than 16. So that means it can actually fit in here in two different directions. Side A is greater than H but it's less than B, so we get two triangles. You have to know what H is. Okay, let's try one more. If we have a 36 degree angle, and the side opposite is five. This could be considered angle A. Our adjacent side, it's best to call this one the 12. Otherwise, your altitude is not coming downwards if you pick your side on another edge. Just makes it more complicated. So we want to know what the height is. We notice that the side opposite is not longer than the adjacent side. We need to compare it to the height of the triangle. So opposite over hypotenuse, sine of 36 is going to be the height over 12, which is 12 sine of B, or B sine of A. So that is going to be 12 sine of 36, which is 7.05. 
So what happens if this is 7.05 and the side opposite is only 5? It's never going to reach the bottom. So if A is less than H, smaller than the height, there is no triangle. We come on over here and we saw that A was greater than H. But less than the side next to it, there's going to be two triangles. If it's smaller than the height, then there's no triangle. We'll talk more about calculating these out, but there we go.